are back. We are back with, I think, our last installment of this bow build. Uh, last episode, we slapped on this Redline RL1, got her all squared away with the bow. We have not sighted it in or anything like that. That can be later. Um, the last two pieces of things we got to put on here. Uh, well, I guess it's three. But the stabilizer, the back bar, and the quiver. Super simple stuff here. We're talking basics. Um, but I will tell you what I do like about each of these products. Let's get into it. And, uh, 21 inch beard. Yes! Oh, there he is. Oh, All right, first things first. We have the eight inch stabilizer and the six inch for the back bar. Um, I talked on Derek's video about his. What's on my beard? Oh, I drank some milk. <laughs> I talked in Derek's video about uh, what I do like about these stabilizers. I've had a couple in the past and they, they've served both different purposes. Um, the original one I ever had for a stabilizer wasn't even a stabilizer. It was just, just there for some uh, vibration dampening. And the other stabilizer I had was like a, it's over there, it's like a 12 inch long, heavy uh, heavy sucker that was just really meant to be tipping my bow forward. What I like about these, the carbon cylinder with the weight at the very end. Reasons behind that, it gives you a lot of opportunity for fine tuning on how you want your ball to bow to fall, whether it's falling forward or sitting stationary after your shot, that's what these carbon fiber cylinders are good for. Like you can see, basically to balance this thing, I've gotta go underneath of the weights. So that's what the, your weights being all at the far end, you know it's good to go. With installing these, I mean, it's pretty simple. On this, on this Spectre E from Darton, there's a bushing inside of there so you don't have to worry about waxing your screws. You just put it in. That's all you do, screw it right in. Boom, that one's done. Now, for the back bar though, for the back bar, uh, Redline sends you a piece right here, RLBB, for the back bar. Um, we gotta install this. So you can see here on this back bar piece, it's got a bunch of uh, marks for you to get your, your back bar dialed right in. And then if, just in case you happen to bump it, you at least know but it gives you a lot of opportunity to change the angle and stuff like that on both ends, this side and that side. So you just need a screw, we're gonna put that in, and then we're gonna slap the, I almost put that in backwards, and then we're gonna slap it in. Slap it in. It gives you two bolt slots. You can have it sticking out further if you wanted to, um, stationary. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna run it tighter to my bow because I don't need a whole lot of adjustment for my, um, bow lean, but I do want it for stabilization after I shoot. I like it, when I shoot, I don't like my bow to fall forward so much, I like it to be level. Take it down, boom, that's installed. Now, inside of this back bar piece, there comes this tiny little chunk right here. What we're gonna do is thread that on to the six inch. Why are the chickens awake? It is nine o'clock at night right now. So you have your six inch back bar, and there's this little piece right here. What you gotta do is you gotta thread this piece in, just a little bit, because that's what's gonna set inside of your back bar mount. Just locks right in there, and then you just thread her in. Get her tight, get her where you want her. And then we're done. That's it. That's it until you go to shoot it, because then you're fine tuning things. That's all it really is. Um, that's your initial setup. So the other thing we have to install, which we did with Derek's, is this wicked RL1 three arrow carbon fiber quiver. The thing weighs six and a half ounces empty. Not a dang thing in it. And you might ask why I'm doing a three arrow quiver because in the past I have done way more than a three arrow quiver. I usually typically would have five arrows. And you know why? Because I would shoot at every freaking squirrel I'd ever see. It'd keep me busy. So I'm sticking with a three arrow quiver. Another reason why I decided to stick with three arrow quiver with the Western hunting I don't really want to be carrying a crap load of arrows with me and just really taking up time from, I don't know, it's just more weight on the shoulders and everything else. So I'm keeping it focused. I'm just going to go with three arrows and I like this. This thing uh, on the Instagram, we did slight review on it already. Four millimeter arrows fit well in this. Uh, there's two sections like you can kind of see, you can kind of see here that there's extra slots. Um, I don't know if it was an intentional design or not, but you could, that arrow will fit 
the four millimeter will fit in the first initial cut in this gripper but if you're a little nervous about uh, it slipping or something while you're really dragging it through the mud, you can push that down all the way and bottom this out in this gripper. And she is like a super gripper. But honestly, these four millimeter arrows that I'm rocking, the outer cutting area is w working great. So that's something to think about. Nano, nano diameter arrows work well in these, as well as standard and just micro diameter. In the past, uh, I had been using a two piece quiver fixed and so it never came off. But I have been missing the uh, subtleness and the beautifulness of just a quiver you can take off, especially when chasing turkeys, and that's really what we're getting set up to do. The other nice thing about um, a three arrow quiver that I hadn't even thought of until right now is when I was rocking a five arrow quiver and I went to go set my drop away and it being fixed quiver, I had to really reach in, like either come in between arrows to lift up my drop away, or I had to come in around with my left hand and, and set it up. Now with a three arrow quiver, I can get my hands around that real easily. And check it one more time, looks good. Lock her into place. And here, I'll, I'll get on this real quick and I'll show you these micro diameter arrows on here. Okay, so what we're shooting is, Right now, these uh, X-Impact by Black Eagle. I think I might have mentioned them in another video. And if you can see here, let me just get this up here. Uh, also, the hood on this does hold both fixed and mechanical. Um, I'll try and get a little shout up in here. It's just a little cutout design. So, I'm just pushing this in for the first setting. And that gripper, that's solid. That ain't going nowhere, right? But if you really wanted to get after her, you can get it in just one more. You hear that little click in there, and you're good to go. That thing ain't going nowhere. Um, and like I was saying before, I couldn't reach around and grab this drop away because everything was in the way. Now I can just come around like this, boom, that's good to go. So that's another thought. If you're thinking about going with a three arrow or a five arrow, it's a lot, if, and, and you don't plan on taking your quiver off, it's a lot easier to reach your drop away with your opposite hand on the, on the three arrow quiver compared to the five. All right, we have one arrow that I've cut to use as my dummy arrow to see how I want this stabilizer and back bar. So that's the next thing we're gonna do right now. We're just gonna shoot it a couple times into the target and see how it feels. Okay, so I've got this arrow <clears throat> with no fletching because I'm getting ready to do a, um, basically a bear shaft tune on this just to make sure. And, all we're gonna see is how it feels in the hand, first of all. <clears throat> Watch the bubble on our sight to see if it, it falls into place without really trying to torque anything, and then we'll adjust from there. So we're gonna give her a little draw back. Where she sits pretty tight right now. Make any adjustments. Maybe you need to kick it out a little bit. Yeah, we'll kick it out just a little bit more. Not much at all. Right now we're dead nut center. And all we want to do is kick this bar out a little bit more. When you kick the bar out a little more, it's going to give it more leverage to come back. That's what I kind of needed to do. And I needed to kind of kick this end out just to fuzz. Uh, you might be able to tell now we are just about, it was at the zero dash. And now we're just about, just over the one. Um, the nice thing about these I didn't realize is inside of these is a uh, gear. So you can't just, it's not free. Um, it's actually slotted. So even if your bolt was loose a little bit, it's not gonna just knock over there. You gotta really get her moving. All right, let's see how this feels. That's nice. It's about perfect. And I probably will be perfect. Bullet hole too. Bullet hole on top of it, I like it. That is gonna be it for all of the red line equipment installation. So <clears throat> as far as the red line equipment, we're rocking the RL1 three arrow which I just, I, I know I'm gonna love. We also installed the front stabilizer in the back bar and the RL1 three pin sight. Everything seems to be pretty straightforward on here. Everything seems to be great quality and everything just, it looks sharp with this bow too. I'm glad it went black limbs with a, with a tan riser on it because that's, that's pretty sharp looking with the black accents and the red accents. So if you're going for looks, that's another thing you could be thinking of is the, the uh, colors, but um, we're really happy with it. The only thing left I have to do um, is I don't shoot a kisser. I stopped shooting a kisser 
uh, two, three years ago, and I think it was actually before what I use now came out. I used to have a little speed button or a rubber button up here to touch my nose on. I used to serve a big chunk of thread up here to touch my nose against as my other anchor point. I noticed with kissers for me, with the beard, I needed a bigger kisser and it added a lot of vibration and it drove me nuts. So now I've switched to a nose button and I am installing one of these Bomar nose buttons. I don't think I'm gonna do an actual video on them because there's, I mean, Josh Bomar's got a video out there of it. Um, I do like to run the smaller one though. This is basically the end of the bow build. Let's put it that way. This is the end of the bow build. If you guys have any questions on any of the things that we've installed, please feel free to drop a comment and we'll try and answer them below or we'll make another video to go into better detail. Things left to do is I still have to cut 11 arrows, fletch 11 arrows, and make sure that uh, they're all spinning great and everything else. So we're gonna do an arrow build. If any of that sounds good to you guys and you like, enjoyed it, hey, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, get notified when we post the next video. Otherwise, I'm going to bed. It is 9.30. Actually, I'm not going to bed, I got stuff to do, but I'm gonna stop videotaping. So until next time, we'll see you guys on the flip side. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much. Catch you later.